who considered themselves Palestinians because, yes, Israel went there and decided to call them Palestinians, too, and they took on that nation. And the okay. nation you, you, can't, you can't answer the question is what you're demonstrating here. Can I say it again, sir? Uh, you can't answer the question. Listen, Jimmy, you're not alone in this. This is not a generational thing. Uh, Jimmy Carter likes to, you know, God bless him with his uh, fight against cancer and all that. Jimmy Carter has, for the last decade, shown up on national television programs and spoken of Palestine. It's a place. And talk about the nation of Palestine. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And, J.J., I appreciate the call. But this is the this is the rouge. This is the phoniness uh, with uh, with which this is dressed up. By the way, go uh, J.J., please, if you're still listening to me, I, I know it hurts to be called out with your foolishness. And, I, you know, far be it from me. I'm only here filling in for Dr. Savage for a few hours today. He'll be back uh, next week on Monday. But I, I understand it, it probably... You know, it hurts feelings to come face to face with reality when you live in the stupor of a rouge, of a falsehood. But if you're still listening to me, JJ, please go to uh, michaelsavage.com and read the news story of the Palestinians destroying yet another Jewish historical site. Quit reading these stupid talking points from barackobama.com or wherever they're coming from all the you know huffington post i don't know quit reading these talking points about oh the hostility and oh the nation is the people and the nation is the individual homes that the israelis are invading no read the news i won't use the expletive i was going to use. read the news this is being fact-checked and verified by multiple national and international news agencies. The Palestinians, hello, have destroyed yet another Jewish historical site. It, it, dear God, what do you do? What do you do when people want to pretend that there's a nation called Palestine? Now, discussing whether or not there should be a nation called Palestine, that's a different subject. But you don't just speak things into existence. I understand Barack Obama thinks he can. Yeah, you know, the only the only being that has ever spoken something into existence is God Almighty, Lord Jehovah Yahweh, however you care to address him. That, by the way, is theological. That is biblical. That's from what I would as a Christian call the Old Testament. God speaking the earth into existence. But you don't just, you know, imagine a, a nation doesn't exist just simply because you say it, it exists. Um, anyway, that said, um, uh, shall we move on here? We have a terrible problem, and it's a very serious one, involving the economy. Now, the latest, and this is not uh, this is not new either. This has been a problem for a, a mighty long time for, well, since before Barack Obama entered the White House. But it's been exacerbated. It's been made worse uh, because of Barack Obama's fiscal and economic policies. Remember, remember a long time ago, I mean, this is ancient history Back, you know, a couple of days after he took the oath of office for the first time back in January of 2009. If you can remember back that far, liberal progressives, remember when President Obama promised shovel-ready jobs? Remember that thing called the economic stimulus bill that was supposed to come out to, what, like $813 million, something like that? It actually ended up being like closer to $900 million or some such figure, way more than what was promised. Uh, but that was supposed to create shovel-ready jobs and stimulate the economy. And guess what? Today, members of Congress, Republican and uh, Democrat alike, they have no idea where the money went. In fact, when I was working on my last book, a book called The Virtues of Capitalism, I was researching. This this was um, I, I was wrapping up the manuscript in the first quarter of 2010. It's been out for a while now, and even in 2010, members of Barack Obama's own party in Congress, the Democrats, said, "Well, you know, we didn't monitor the stimulus money quite like we should have. They don't know where the money went." And here we are, all these years into the uh, the new economy, the the green economy that President Obama is creating, and guess what? This uh, international retail chain headquartered in Arkansas, which is just the uh, the butt of jokes and the uh, object of hostility, the likes of which most corporations in the world have never seen before. Walmart, that has enabled people to get through these excruciatingly difficult economic years brought, ab brought about and brought upon us by Barack Obama and his minions in the Congress and in the federal agencies. Walmart, that has allowed us to survive with the essentials that we need in our daily lives. Even Walmart 
is now feeling the heat. I mean, th- th- this has been a bad week for Walmart. If you own stock in Walmart, you've seen the price tumble. I think it came up a little bit today in today's trading. Uh, but uh, the big headlines say, Walmart struggles the worst in 15 years. <gasps> what does this mean for the economy? And here's what the dominant financial and business news media, here's their spin on it. Because they, they don't connect the dots. Understand that um, uh, those who work at the big financial and business news media outlets, many of them anyway, uh, they don't have adequate training in market economics. They have not been trained in critical thinking. And most of them are, you know, in New York City and Manhattan where the economy is doing pretty well anyway. So they just take the press release from the Department of Labor or the Department of Commerce and, you know, they look at a hard copy and go, oh, look at this, job creation's on the rise, the economy's in recovery. And that's what ends up in their story. Well, the spin on Walmart, the reality of Walmart, completely contradicts the narrative of the dominant news media. We're in recovery mode. I mean, my goodness, look at the unemployment rate. It's down to, you know, what, 5.1%. That ignores, of course, people dropping out of the labor force. This other economic data point called the labor force participation rate, that doesn't even get reported. But now that Walmart has, uh, you know, they they announced to their investors, their shareholders, uh, gee whiz, our profit margins are tumbling, and we don't see a very bright 2016, and uh, our decline in profits probably continues at least into the first quarter of 2017. That just does not fit with the Obama media worldview here. And so, you know, you can't go back and start studying how economics works. It would certainly be just ridiculous for the financial and business news journalists to actually learn something about the subject by which they're supposed to be reporting. No, no, no. You cook up another narrative. It's all it is. Storylines. We're a a culture and certainly our dominant media driven by narrative storylines. So the new narrative is this. Americans just don't feel comfortable enough to go out shopping like they used to. They need, you know, some sort of assistance in becoming more comfortable. They were just kind of fearful is all. There's just an anxiety in the land. And maybe they're just fearful about, oh, I don't know, global warming upending the planet. Maybe we need to do more to solve and to protect and to end global warming. You know, higher taxes on the cost of gasoline, higher fees when you go to register your motor vehicle. Notice that the uh, the allegation, the alleged threat of global warming, the solution is always always, always take more of your freedom away. Always charge you more. Take more of your money away when you go to do anything with fossil fuels. The the narrative in the business of financial news media is people are just a little uncomfortable. If we can provide safety and let them feel safe again, well, the consumers will go out and spend and uh, everything will get back to normal and everything will be good. This is the insanity, my friend, my fellow American. Uh, For one thing, it's been the bigger part of three decades now where our U.S. economy has been way too reliant on a a consumer-based economy. The the U.S. consumer, your proclivity to buy consumable goods and to spend money on discretionary stuff. You know, oh, look at that. You've got the cheap DVDs in the big bin at Walmart. I'll buy up a bunch of them. Well, I'll take 10. That's what's been driving the economy for way too long. The answer, the solution to that dilemma. How do we get out of that? The solution is we've got to start manufacturing again. But guess what? We can't manufacture because that's environmentally unfriendly. And should it be the case that, well, I don't know, you own rural timber land in uh, the western U.S. or what have you, and you'd like to chop down trees and sell the timber on the open market, Ooh, no, 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 no. you're murdering trees. You see, humankind and human activity, especially human economic activity, it gets in the way of nature. That's the problem. We've got to get back to building stuff and selling stuff and exporting stuff. We've got to get the manufacturing thing going again. We have been far too reliant on consumer sales, purchases of consumables that get sold in big big box stores for a long, long time. Uh, But uh, the the dominant business and financial news media, they don't know what to do with a Walmart that's uh, tanking. And by the way, here's another component of it. 
add to that the shackles were already in place from previous eras and previous administrations with manufacturing and real solid, robust economic growth. That's been uh, something that's slowly getting worse and worse and worse for a long, long time. It's gone into hyperdrive since Barack Obama entered the White House. But here's the other layer that the, the dominant business and financial news media, they won't even touch this. No, no, no. <clears throat> Walmart has substantially increased its uh, wage that it pays to entry-level workers amid huge pressure and threats of unionization. And, you know, if Walmart, if you don't you know, double your minimum wage that you pay entry-level workers, why, we'll go to the city council in any town USA and demand a doubling of the uh, the wage. Under enormous political pressure, Walmart has started paying their entry-level workers good, uh, better wages, higher wages, which you know you can look at that and say, great, it's still unskilled labor. You don't need a huge track record of work to get hired for one of those entry-level positions. You certainly don't need to go to community college and earn a degree or certificate or go to a trade school and take tests and get licenses and those kinds of things. You can kind of show up and pass some very basic minimal scrutiny and get hired on as a uh, clerk, as a worker at Walmart. God bless them for that. There's nothing wrong with that, but it is for the most part unskilled labor. But amid political pressure from the Obama minions, Walmart has in some markets around the country, nearly double their entry-level wage. Well, guess what? The higher wages and all the additional employee training that they're now promising, that takes about $20 million out of the company. And you don't just arbitrarily take $20 million out of an internationally known corporation's budget without that having an effect on the bottom line. So here it is. I mean, thanks be to the uh, the pressure from the Obama sycophants, uh, Walmart, a company that, again, distributes vital products and services at very reasonable prices to people who need them. They meet a lot of people's needs, a lot of consumer needs. Walmart, that has done pretty darn good as a stock over the last, you know, 15, 20 years or so. Uh, here's the rub. You can't have a company that produces well for everybody, including its stakeholders and its shareholders, while there's political pressure coming to support only one of the stakeholders. That's what's happened with Walmart. You double the wage, it does tank the bottom line. And and the dominant financial and business news media, they don't want to address it. They want to ignore it. They want to pretend that that's even happening. But that's part of the story. That's the part that's missing. Final few moments of this episode of the Savage Nation. On the way, Dr. Michael Savage is off today. I am author and columnist Austin Hill. Back in moments. Don't go anywhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Hey, did you... The Savage Nation. That's what you're listening to. Dr. Michael Savage is off today. I am author and columnist Austin Hill. Honored to have sat in today for Dr. Savage. Thank you, Dr. Savage, for inviting me to cover for a few hours today. He's back on Monday. Uh, but in the meantime, and I, I sincerely mean this, I um, everything I've said here today, earlier this hour, about uh, my love and care and, quite frankly, concern for the nation of Israel and my love and care and concern for our own nation, uh, it really is genuine. I've had the privilege of kind of uh, taking a sneak peek and an advanced preview of his book, Dr. Savage's book, Government Zero, which the title is to connotate the fact that we've got a zero when it comes to a plan to protect the American people, a plan to find ISIS, language, culture, borders. I mean, uh, there is no plan to secure those kinds of things. And we are in the midst of a very, very dangerous game that the liberal progressives are playing. They think that this is a pathway to some kind of utopia for their side, and the rest of us will be damned and, and cut off at the uh, the neck and, and sent to hell or purgatory or whatever. They think that this is really great for them and just will eradicate, eliminate the rest of us who may dare ask questions and disagree with them from time to time. What they don't understand is this open borders insanity and this uh, empowering of radical Islam and bringing Sharia law into the country, what they don't understand is they're going to kill themselves in the process. 
michaelsavage.com. Connect with him on Twitter. I just tweeted at uh, Dr. Savage's Twitter account. Find me at, at AskAustin and Dr. Savage at A Savage Nation. See you next time. It's the Savage Nation. Wow.